Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Bibi Bratunde Ikotun. Thank you so much for tuning in. If this is your very first time of being here, I'd like to say a very big welcome to you. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for clicking this link. As you know me, I'm a faith and lifestyle content creator and with me today is no stranger. I think if you've been on my YouTube channel long enough, you would be very used to Franklin's face. So we have Franklin on my channel today. And by the topic of today, you know the gist, you know what we're talking about. <laughs> so a little backstory. Um, last two weeks, I believe it was on January 10, I celebrated my three years of moving to Canada and I did a very thankful post on LinkedIn that was very, very successful. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that video, I actually got a lot of people reaching out to me from Nigeria asking questions like, oh, how did you get your job before mm -hmm. relocating? Like I had a lot of people that were interested in finding a job before moving to Canada. So when Franklin reached out to me and said we should have a conversation about this on my YouTube channel, I was like, you know what, this is a value add for everybody because I know so many people are looking for information on how to get a job, how to get um, career pro um, progression in a new country as an immigrant. And frankly, honestly, just launched a new book about that. And I'll give him a chance to talk about it after we've had a very interesting question and answer session on this channel. So frankly, do you want to say anything to the audience? Maybe introduce yourself, even though they all know you already, but I mean, <laughs> yeah, your call. Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. Thanks, Bibi, for having me um, on your platform again. It's been really, very really, um, awesome. Um, yeah, Franklin here. I am. I'm a writer. I'm a speaker, and I'm also um, an IT professional. And um, and it's good to be back. I can't wait yeah. for today's discussion. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. So I'll get right into the Q and A. So for everyone, if I'm looking down, it's because I'm looking at my questions. So my first question would be, what would you say are some top challenges new immigrants face in the course of landing their ideal job in Canada? Yeah, very good question. And obviously, um, you know, we can stay here and uh, go through all of the items. <laughs> for this one question, and it's, it's just going to be a lot, but I think like um, for me, um, the, top of the, the top on the list I'll mention <clears throat> about three or four, and these items, I, I uh, these items, I got them mostly from a survey I had done, um, mm -hmm. and because of writing the book, I wanted to, you know, um, get to know about immigrants, hear from their side of the story, right? Mm -hmm. What are some of the challenges and obstacles that they um they, they face in the course of landing their their dream job, you know, especially in Canada, and um. Obviously, it may not be a big surprise to many that number one was lack of Canadian experience, mm. right? That was like the top on the list. Uh, lack of Canadian experience was was uh, was top on the list, and then the other one was um, language barrier, language or culture uh, barrier. That was one big thing as well. Um, another one was. Um, uh, you know, with writing or composing resume and cover letter that was, you know, suited to Canadian environment because um, most of, in most cases, the way people express themselves in their resume and in their cover letter is really very different, right? Than it is done in Canada. It's normally really very different. So, um, so yeah, like um, that was, uh, th those are like, you know, the top, uh, those are the top challenges that, mm -hmm most immigrants face, you know, entering into Canada. I know there can be like, you know, so many others and, you know, you can feel free to like yeah. time based on your experience, but those are like, you know, top ones that I was identifying. Yeah, absolutely. I, I really want us to stay a little bit on that Canadian experience because it can be very frustrating and yeah. challenging, right? right? I mean, you've left your country, you've left all that you've known to come mm -hmm. to a new country that is full of endless possibilities and opportunities. But each time you send out a resume or a CV, let's say you've done everything else on your on the list you just mentioned, right? You've met with a 
CV, um, a resume and cover letter professional. They've really done your le cover letter, your resume to be the Canadian standard. They've been able to right. translate all your excellent skills into the way the Canadian office will understand it. Or let's mm -hmm. say language barrier. Maybe you came from a country that speaks English, so you really mm -hmm. don't have language barrier. Maybe the barrier can be an accent, which is really not an huge deal. Right. But then each time you put in an application, Mm -hmm. And you've had like maybe like 20 years of experience doing something and you're very successful at it, but then you get rejected and say you don't have Canadian experience. How can people really um deal with that? How can they manage a situation like that? Mm -hmm. That when they put in an application, the application gets rejected because of the lack of the Canadian experience. Do you have anything you would like to share? Yeah, absolutely. And definitely um I I relate with that a lot and um I know of a lot of people too who share in the same frustration. You know, these are individuals who in the individual country back home, they are well accomplished. They are like, you know, on the top there, you know, um, in C-suite position. But when they got to, um, you know, like to Canada and um, they started submitting the applications, they were just heartbroken. And most of them are like, I'm going back to my home country. <laughs> so it was really very frustrating, but um, a number of things I think would be, uh, I never think I'm really very helpful in this area. Um, one of them would just be to be okay with a temporary position, right? Be okay with the temporary position. Um, so let's say for example, somebody is um, in the area of uh, project management, right? So that's like where the person has like area of, you know, like um, expertise and they were like project managers for big corporations back in their home country, right? And then they came to Canada and they were looking to say, apply for say a senior project manager, right? And they got a lot of rejection. I think at that point, I think the person should be, should just consider, just consider and just be open to at least getting into the job market with, even if it's intermediate or a junior level, right? Because I think like there's something that that does for you when you get in there um, with that kind of um, position, it helps you at least gain that Canadian experience. And apart from that, you have something that you can put on your resume to show the next employer that, hey, I worked in this company in Canada <laughs> <laughs> right here, yes. right? Because sometimes it can be really very um, you know, challenging looking from the employer point of view. So let's say mm -hmm. they want to hire somebody, right, who claims that, oh, in their home country, they were senior project manager. I don't think like an employer would like have the time to want to like start calling reference from back in their home country, right? And mm -hmm. even if they do, they don't really, they may not really like um, have a good gist of how things operate back there. Mm -hmm. But they will feel more comfortable when they're able to call someone who is literally in Canada because they know how things operate, right? So yeah. I think... Um, being okay with you know a temporary position, um, the person should be okay, just okay with the temporary position for a time being. It's not going to be forever, right? Yes. Um, something else too would just be uh, consider volunteering. Um, volunteering is a very big and huge way to also get uh, that Canadian experience, right? And uh, the also the, uh, the 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 cool thing about volunteering as well is that. It gives you the opportunity to have um, references, right? Yes. Uh, references who are also in Canada. Uh, these are people who can speak for you, people who can vouch for you, who your employer can also call because obviously they are in Canada, right? As opposed to having to reach out to somebody who is in like some far distant country who they don't even <laughs> know anything about. So um, uh, right now, I think those are like um, two of the top uh, things that come to my mind. I was going to say getting certification or accreditation. Um, that's good as well because it's kind of like a good way for um, some uh, some body, uh, some mm -hmm. uh, professional body in Canada to vouch that okay, you have the equivalent skills, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, by Canadian law. Uh, that one is yeah. also good as well. But nothing beats entering the work environment and having yeah. that Canadian experience that you can actually put on your resume and show potential um, prospective uh, employers that this is this this is me, like I've worked mm -hmm. in a Canadian company before. So I think like nothing yeah. beats that at all. So those are like you know, some of my um, ideas. Yeah, thank you for sharing. I personally, I'm not a big fan of, 
of this Canadian experience thing, but I do understand that's the situation and people have to make yeah. do. And right. um, I think another opportunity that people might consider is contract positions too as well. Like you said, temporary, because I know a couple of people that were able to get their foot into the door because someone took a mat leave and there was a 12 month or 18 month open contract position to temporarily feel for that person. And, and yeah. upon their being in that, co- in that company, they showed that they were valuable, they were knowledgeable, right. they knew what they were doing, they were a good addition to the organization from there. Even though the person came back from Matthew, they were like, you know what, just because you're so good, we're going to design a mm-hmm. role that mm-hmm. you're going to fulfill. So, so yeah, that, that those are really, really good examples. And volunteering too. I mean, I know that opportunities to volunteer right now as a result of the pandemic um, is not very many. There are not so many right opportunity to volunteer but i think there are still some you can always still look into it and 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 volunteer and um try to just get your foot in and this is for anyone that may be watching that has just been struggling with getting that job um just remain encouraged um it's gonna happen soon it's gonna happen soon don't be depressed don't be sad um keep Mm -hmm. putting it out there keep putting it out there and when it clicks it would really click and yeah i I, i've been there before and when it happened it it really happened and i was just so so thankful and my own experience was in america i've spoken about that in a different video entirely although in america they'll never tell you you don't have american experience you will not just get the job Mm -hmm. so there's also um that side of thing so we're gonna move to the next question you want to say something um actually i think like uh it's something else that i would just want to like you know add a little bit is um uh because the example i gave it was more so looking for something temporary in your area or specialty Mm -hmm. i think it's possible um pivoting to a different area could also right Uh, because it doesn't necessarily have to be like okay you're an engineer back home you came and you want to also be an engineer. I mean, there are, you know, like, you know, we mentioned earlier, there are like wide range of, there's a wide range of opportunities here. So mm-hmm. if you feel that, okay, you can try something out in a different area, then by all means, I'll give it a shot. Yes, yes. I like that. I like that pivoting too. I like that our current generation, we understand that you don't have to be in the same career for the rest of your life, right? For me now, who knows, maybe after 10, 15 years of being a fundraiser, I can be like, you know what? Now I want to be a tech bro or a tech sis. You never know. (laughs) (laughs) Let me come and make that tech bro money. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Um, changing your skills, upskilling, like it's it's something that we should always be open-minded to not just one way all the time. Opportunities, this is a land of opportunities and just knowing stuff so i would ask my next question sure. what would you say are some cultural differences you've seen or heard about in the workplace and this is such an interesting question because there is there are indeed cultural differences and they're not necessarily <clears throat> bad things right but they're just things that people come into canada or people new in canada should be aware of so that way they can stand out and be successful in their workplace so do yeah. you mind sharing some yeah, sure. Um, again, I like those so many of them. I'll just try to list as many as, <laughs> as come to mind. Uh, one of them that's really very huge is with salutation. Mm. Um, you know, like back in, I come from Nigeria, right? Back in Nigeria, when you want to address someone who is like, you know, elderly, right? You start with Mr. Mrs. Mr. John, Mrs. Janet. <laughs> Are you calling them like, you know, sir, ma, madam, or whatnot? But here, like, everybody's cool just calling them their first name. In fact, um, when I started, like, uh, my, my, my job, uh, one of my, my jobs here in Canada, I was referring to my manager as Mr. Mr. Because actually, this is how you do You took Mr. their last name, right? <laughs> so I was referring to him with, you know, like, with a Mr. And I think I one day he just got non, he kind of like got fed up. I was like, you know, you don't have to call me by, by that, right? <laughs> just call me <laughs> my first name. Like literally, he said that to me. And um, you know, I've also spoken to a number of um, you know, individuals too, and they had like exactly same experience. And um, and yeah, so that was like you know one very big thing. And obviously, 
I see why that is really very valuable and very helpful in the workplace because in a work environment, when you see someone as being, say, superior to mm-hmm. you, the level of rapport between the both of you is not going to be, you know, very, it's not, it just, there's kind of like a disruption yeah. in the level of rapport, right? Um, you kind of like feel that, you know, this person is there to police you. And for that reason, you don't bring like all of who you are mm-hmm. and you're not like free to express yourself in yes. the environment. So, so, you know, that can actually be a barrier to productivity and, you know, to um, performance in the workplace. So I think maybe that's part of the reason why, you know, people here, um, at least in most workplaces, they're okay with you just calling them by their first name. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's one thing. And the other thing too is that over here in the work environment, um, like, you know, Kalinians, they are very clear about boundaries. <laughs> yeah. This is work. Work stuff, stay at work. <laughs> personal life, you know, just keep it personal. Um, a very good example. Um, this was actually a story, somebody, um, one of the people that I interviewed uh, in the course of like, you know, the book project. So this is one thing that they shared with me. Um, I think it was uh, one of their co-workers, right? Because you know how, you know, Canadians are very friendly, very, you know, like warm, very warm and, you know, heartfelt and like, you know, they relate really very well. Uh, so exactly it was the same case there. Like, you know, they had like, you know, um, like in a team, um, mm-hmm. everyone was really very happy and friendly. So I'm warm towards one another. And um, and so they thought, okay, yes, well, we have a very good, solid relationship, right? Oh, boy. <laughs> and then one of them had like a wedding coming up. And guess what? Invited his team. He did not invite them. <laughs> oh, boy. So they took it very personal. And they were like, come on. Like, I thought we were friends. <laughs> nah. They're like, I thought we were friends. And um, the person kind of got, you know, um, disappointed and like, you know, it's kind of like got discouraged and disappointed and whatnot. But, you know, he kind of like learns that, hey, um, that's how some individuals are in this place. Yeah. Right. They are professional when they need to be professional. Um, and, you know, they maintain professional relationship, but personal mm-hmm. is different, right? Yeah. So, um, um- let me chime in a little bit. And okay. I think I wanted to I want to stress this because like you said, friendly, warm, open, you know their great grandfather's name, you know their <laughs> dog's name, you know everything about them. So it's safe, right, for you to assume that you're friends. Mm-hmm. And for someone like me coming from a Nigerian culture, you necessarily right. don't um give up personal information Mm -hmm. you only give off personal information to the people that you think are your friends right so there's that culture diff cultural difference that you can know someone because they talk a lot about themselves you can know their child's name know where their child goes to school know their favorite color know so much information about them but that doesn't really make you your friend and i want to just that out because where we come from Mm-hmm. For you to have access to that kind of information about someone, mm-hmm. it means you guys are close. Yeah. So right. it was something that also happened to me, and this happened to me in grad school. It didn't happen mm-hmm. to me in the workspace. Like there mm-hmm. was this girl we always hung out. I knew everything. I'd met her family. So in my mind, I was like, "Hey, we're besties. We're cool." And then she did something that completely like shocked me, and mm-hmm. it wasn't anything to her. To me, I was mm-hmm. like really hurt. Like, how can you do this? I thought we're cool. Yeah. So she was like, I, I don't understand. Like, so it's also managing expectations, right? Mm-hmm. Because you know everything about someone, because you have access to information about them. That's just the culture of this place, right? You talk about your life and everything, but don't make a mistake and think you guys are besties. And also be very intentional in maintaining those boundaries, putting boundaries for yourself too as well. Mm-hmm. And making mm-hmm. sure um, you have good expectations and understand that that's just a cultural thing. It right. doesn't make friends, and you can you can still mm-hmm. maintain a professional and cordial relationship mm-hmm. working with with your Canadian coworkers, even though you know everything about them. Doesn't mean you're best friends and have no expectations. Right. So yeah, 
chime that in. So please proceed with any yeah, of that. Sure. No, that's very good. Thanks. Thanks a lot for like, you know, um, pouring some more uh, light on it. It's uh, really very good. Because uh, uh, like, you know, for me too, um, I don't recall that I, I had like a similar experience, but mm -hmm. I just kind of like, you know, figured it out, right? That um, Canadians, although um, they're really very friendly, open and whatnot, but you know the way you guys have interact in the workplace, <sighs> it's likely not going to be exactly the same if you were to see them like you know outside, right? It's not yeah. so. Um, so, yeah, but yeah, that was also something that I, I learned um, myself. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, was, and to add the caveat, it doesn't necessarily mean that there won't be people that you will build personal relationship with. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. So oh, just yeah. add, like you would know when you're both building a personal relationship mm -hmm. that passes the professional space. Yeah. You would definitely know. So you can actually have friends at work, mm -hmm. but don't just assume everybody that is friendly is a friend. Exactly. So, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it, as you know, as we were just speaking right now, it actually just occurred to me that um, there was act, there was a, a team I was part of, mm -hmm. you know, a piece of work. <clears throat> One of them, because the team was the team was actually close, right? The team had a Facebook, sorry, a WhatsApp group. <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> they had a WhatsApp group, right? So they were really very close, and you know, um, uh, they would help one another with uh, personal issues, like fixing personal stuff, you know? And one of them got married and the person actually invited the whole team. <laughs> See, there's also that. Yeah, so there's, um, it, yeah. there are some difference, right? Some, some differences, um, yeah, some exceptions rather. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, apart from that um, cultural difference, I think one thing too is with the way people communicate, both written and verbal, it's very informal, right? Um, like, just go straight to the point. Exactly. What do you, you, want, don't to, what do you want to say? <laughs> you don't need to like go and look for words in dictionary and slam some thirty-two letter word when you can just say it in <laughs> like a five-letter word. Like you're not there to like impress mm -hmm. or to you know like show up. Or just go straight to the point. Very simple yeah. with what you want to say, right? Um, very, very informal with your conversation. And uh, yeah, so that was also one thing. That Let me add that. So that informality that you talk about, it also applies to, um, for example, with my work experience in Nigeria, if your boss wants you to do something, they would say, do this. But here, the communication is not do this. Is would, would you like to? Do you want to? All right. <clears throat> It's not necessarily like you have an option to say no. It's just <laughs> see. yeah, it's because you really can't say no. I don't want to do it. Right. But phrase in a way that it's considerable of the project right. you're managing. Right. So if your boss comes and says, "Oh, would you like to do this?" or even when you go for advice, right? When you're talking to someone, um, back in Nigeria, you say, "Oh, do this, do this, do this." But here, people come together. If I were you, mm -hmm. I do this. So right. even those little nuances in the way you communicate, your boss communicates with you. Also, sometimes like there is some kind of like indirectness in the directness, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say you you messed up in a project and you know you messed up. Here, nobody would want to make you feel horrible about messing up. <laughs> back in back home in Nigeria, everyone is gonna give it to you. Like you <laughs> messed up. So yeah, everyone pretty much knows that you're feeling bad. <laughs> when the person wants to try to talk to you about the project you messed up, the way they'll communicate will be different. It doesn't mean that the severity of your mess up is low. Right. It just means that they're, they're aware that you feel bad. They don't want mm. to add kerosene to the fire. So the way yeah. they talk about it, like, okay, you know, you did this X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. This is how this one, that one, this is how I would do it next time. Maybe next time talk to your supervisor first before issuing 500 invoices to this. Like there's a way to, there's an indirectness to it. Yeah. And I think it's something I actually appreciate because then mm -hmm. you don't always feel nervous. You don't always yeah. feel on edge. Right. And I remember, right. um, because again, like working back in Nigeria, I just felt like the environment was set up for me to kind of fail. Mm. So another, and this is me adding to your point, but another yeah. thing I like about the workplace here, and it's not all, I'm not saying everybody's office is the same. Yeah. It's like their companies are excellent, their companies are not. Mm. 
But as a result of my experiences where I work and where I used to work, right, is like you're encouraged to succeed. Mm -hmm. You're encouraged to be the best version of yourself. You're Mm -hmm. encouraged to put yourself out there, be entrepreneurial. And um, it's like, and I remember... (laughs) I remember a few years ago when I was interviewed for a job position in Canada, I was back in Nigeria, I did it in my dad's yeah. place. And so when I finished the interview, my dad's co-worker, um, um, people that worked for my dad, they were there. And they were like, did you just do an interview? I said, yes. The person was like, you can't interview like this in Nigeria. The mm. bosses will think you want to come and steal their thunder because you're <laughs> interested them too much. Right? Yeah. Like, because of course, in the interview, you want to be your best report. I like your success. Yeah. Is how amazing you are. You want them to like you. You want them to think, oh, this person will come to my team and yeah. make us better. Yeah. And the guy said, ah, that you can't interview like this in Nigeria. Oh. Yeah. They'll put your name in the do not. <laughs> because they'll look at you and be like, this one wants to come and take my job. Yeah. So, that was so interesting. So yeah. that's also <laughs> Yeah, I just had to point that out, but please proceed. Wow, that's really very good. Um, I don't know if we're going to get to talk about this, what you just kind of like triggered right now. Uh-huh. So let me just quickly say it. If I remember my next point, fine. If I don't, then hopefully I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, um, um, this is also relating to the work environment and mm-hmm. more so during interviews and um with a writing of a resume and cover letter, how you mm-hmm. present yourself, right? Because I also felt that coming from, you know, Nigeria, where I came from, when, like, it almost feels like you're not allowed to talk about yourself, about how yes, good it's you, like are, pride. you are, right? It's pride. It feels like, yes, you're being arrogant or prideful. Yeah. So, but here, they really welcome it. You're okay, it's okay to demonstrate your skills, to talk about mm-hmm. what you've done, um, how awesome you are, what you bring to the table, because to them, that's like you being confident in what yeah. you have to offer, right? Because I remember like, um, I, you know, I, I you know, shared uh, the story about, you know, uh, my experience as well <clears throat> coming into Canada. And um, like, I just did not feel <laughs> I had the permission to talk about myself. And for that reason, like I wasn't even getting interviews. Um, I, wasn't, I wasn't being called back interviews until just thank god like i had like someone who i i I, I would call like my career coach he saw that because he was canadian and he saw that to me and i was like yo we have to like break this ice (laughs) so he really like drew me he walked on me and i was like oh god and i just realized hey like it's fine it's okay to demonstrate your skills to talk about how because if you don't blow your trumpet um nobody else will will. And this is not like you being like arrogant or bragful. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I know some people can do it in that manner, but yeah. the intention really matters. Like you, you want to show them that, hey, I can do this job. Mm-hmm. I have what it takes, right? Look at my portfolio, see all of this. And mm-hmm. obviously, if you don't tell them at the interview, like they will know, like those they guys, know. Are like, you know, with that. they're not going to, you know, go do some good <laughs> and find out. They will not even care to go that extra mile. <laughs> No, nobody cares. It's your job to blow your trumpet. And exactly. it's so important because I remember when I did my first resume, I did it with my very good friend, Aziza. And she was asking me questions. As she was asking me questions, I would say. So we're talking about my fundraising portfolio. Mm-hmm. And she asked me like about the job experience. It's like, oh, so baby, what did you do at the job? I was like, oh, I just spent time writing proposals day after day. So baby, um, can you summarize how many proposals you wrote as in a period of this job? And I was like, oh, maybe like about 150. She's like, what? Wow. Put that in the resume. I, was like, oh, I know, eh? So I was like, like, what? And I was like, oh, <laughs> you have to put it in the resume. I was like, yeah. I was are you? They're like, no, that's being proud, that's being showy. That's not she's like, no, you did something major. So yeah. switching your brain to seeing that you doing hard work, you reducing costs in your company by 10%. Yeah. It's a major people want people that are effective and can do the work. So if you're yeah. not shouting it out on the top of the roof in your cover letters and your resume and your interview, <laughs> you're your own. It's, yes. it's so important. It's so, so important. Mm-hmm. You have to be your own cheerleader. Yeah. You have to be your own, vo- like your own champion. Because yeah. I think about interviews as defending your case. Mm-hmm. Why mm-hmm. should you hire you? Why should yeah. you, like, why should it be you? What value would you bring to our organization? Right. 
So you don't want to go there and be forming, oh, um, yeah, no, 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 sell it, <laughs> sell it. And, and sometimes you might even have to embellish a little bit, mm-hmm. right? A little, not, Get please creative. don't lie. Nobody yes, saying not lie. It's not white lie, you're black lie, you're purple lie, no. you're pink lie. But get creative, <laughs> embellish it Oh, yeah. Like, if you wrote one of your 50 um, applications, you can even ask it, like, you wrote it all from the scratch. Like, let people say, like, you were hard working. You, you wrote it with your eyes closed. closed. <laughs> exactly. Like, yourself <laughs> sound amazing. Because, you know what? You're truly amazing. Even if your culture yeah. that you're coming from doesn't appreciate that kind of thing. You're now in a new culture and you're yes. here to acclimatize and become a part of this new culture. Yeah. So you ask, like they say, when in Rome, act like mm-hmm. the Romans. And when this Canada, is what we like when you come to act like Canadians. And this <laughs> is what will really set you apart from other immigrants that are applying for the same position. How much can you market yourself? How much can you sell yourself to your audience? It's, yeah. it's okay, it's okay. But yeah, do you have any other cultural <laughs> differences you would like to highlight? Yeah, yeah, there's one more thing too. Um, I think this one may be, may not be very predominant, right? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so when it comes to the working time, right? I feel like, um, like here, they are more, not necessarily strict, but everybody mm-hmm. already knows, okay, maybe nine to five or uh, eight to four or whatnot, right? So, and you know, most people like keep to the time um, and they really don't have much expectations from mm-hmm. you to, you know, if you choose to, they don't have a lot of like an expectation for you to like, you know, lo- work longer. If you choose to work longer, it's fine, <clears throat> right? Yeah. And um, nobody's going to come knock you on the head and be like, yo, um, is after your work hours, come here now and, fin- and get this work done. Like, oh. you're not permitted to do that, right? Mm-hmm. And I mean, like, don't like, <laughs> you're, not right. you're don't human being. So, like, like, yes, you can, you can choose not to do it and it's still fine, right? Um, but I don't know if it's the case, you know, like outside, right? Um, no. So, but yeah, that was also something else that I, I, I can, um, you know, recall for sure. Yeah. I would share a quick a quick experience. So when I moved back from America to Nigeria, I went to work for a year. Of course, I would, anyways, whatever the case may be, and I'll just say, of course, I would not mention the name of the company, but if you really wanted to find it, you, you will find it. So I, I had such a toxic relationship mm. with my, um, with the person that managed me. There was this high mm. expectation that whether I message you at 5 a.m. in the morning mm or 9 p.m. at night, you must always be with your work phone. Your work phone must never be off. Your work phone, the network must not be bad. Your work phone must, like anytime I want you, you must be at my back and call. Mm-hmm. And I that didn't just work. That didn't just work for me. Like, I don't want to be at the back and call of anybody, yeah. especially even on the weekends, frankly. So mm-hmm. it's not just weekdays, even on the weekend. Mm-hmm. And he, like, and there were a lot of other toxic things that happened. Mm-hmm. Like, I always tell people that when I left that job, mm-hmm. I was a shadow of myself. Mm-hmm. And which is why I strongly believe that God gave me my the job that i got my first job in canada before moving so you can mm. remind me that oh you're actually a brilliant person because by the yeah. time i left i'd been torn down oh, wow. i've been humiliated i felt like i was an airhead i felt mm. like i didn't know anything i felt so dumb mm-hmm. so when god gave me that job and i came back and my bosses were actually encouraged like oh wow you did that that's really awesome i'm not thinking maybe they're gaslighting me like are they sure Mm. Is that really an awesome job? So, mm. um, yeah, toxic workplaces. I wouldn't say they don't exist here completely, but truth of matter is that you have rights. Right. You have options. You don't have to stay. Because I understand back on where you come, there may be high unemployment, that you feel mm. like you have to take nonsense. Right. You have right. to be humanized, right? Because you need to feed <clears throat> your family. But here, there are laws. If you ever feel unsafe, you can always go to your HR. Mm-hmm. If not, there, there are places you can call to report things that make you feel unsafe. I mean, right. I wouldn't say the first thing for you to do is to 
call HR. I feel like there are other steps before. Maybe you want to have a dialogue with that person. Maybe you want to escalate to a supervisor, right? Mm -hmm. Anyone that makes you feel unsafe, anyone that makes you feel like you're, just makes you feel like you're not in the right space. Yeah. Yeah. You have options. If you ever feel that way, please don't stay there. The impact of working in a toxic environment outlives your duration of working there. When you leave, you leave weaker. In fact, the next opportunity you might take might be something that is less than you because you've been drummed to believe that you're not good enough. So any yeah. next opportunity, something that's going to be, le- is going to be less than you. So yeah, um, I wouldn't say they're totally not toxic bosses or toxic. Mm-hmm. I've never experienced that since I moved mm-hmm. up, but I think I've been very fortunate to work in like with people that are amazing um but yeah that's something you don't you don't have to take it if you don't want to absolutely not you don't have to take it i I, I wanted to throw that in there so one thing i wanted to point out because i've seen a couple of people complain about this is that um at their workplace there are people they work with prefer for them to be over sharers than under sharers. So, you know, in Nigeria, you just kind of wait till your project is complete when the project is successful. But one thing that I've seen my friends complain about is that their bosses want them to talk about everything they're doing. So even in meetings, like what are you working on? Don't downplay your projects. Oh. If you would speak about yourself in an interview is the same way you want to speak about yourself in internal meetings. Like, oh, so mm. what's on your plate? Speak out loud, speak. If you're doing 10 things at a time, let everybody know. Yeah. It's important to know that you're a very busy person. Now yeah. for them, you're not doing anything, whereas you're doing stuff. So I wanted to add that as a well, that's point. That's a very good one for sure. That's very good. Yeah. 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 Everyone know what everyone is working on, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So true. Is there another workplace cultural differences? Um, oh, I don't remember one. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Go on, yeah. I mean, we're working from home now, so the likelihood of this happening would be less. Yeah. But in a workplace, you want to take lunches that smell neutral. <laughs> Please do not take. Ogbono to work because wow. if you microwave Ogbono soup in the microwave in your lunch space, it will smell. Not mm-hmm. everybody likes the smell of crayfish. Mm-hmm. Some people actually get irritated by it. so stick to taking easy things like jollof rice, <laughs> fried rice. Don't take beans to work, please. Don't take food that has low cost beans <laughs> to work. Do you have a story? Because I have stories too. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. The smell would not work for everybody. <laughs> Try not to take it to work. Don't take fish to work. In fact, um, I don't have any. <laughs> no, it's I don't have any personal... difference. <laughs> no, I don't have any personal story though. But um, uh, <laughs> I guess it's kind of like on the positive side. Most mm-hmm. times, when I when I like take food to uh, like the food I take to work. For some very, 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 very interesting reason. They almost seem to like like what I cook. Like, oh, they're like, frankly, it smells good. You're a good cook. Like, I mean, what do you do? You take very well. a bono soup to work. Yeah, not the one. Like, honestly, <laughs> <laughs> I think I've taken beans before. I took beans before, but I think um, my bean smells good. Okay. If you say so. <laughs> my bean smells good. Yeah, well, no, like um, soup and all of those heavy stuffs, man. Like, um, I don't think I've ever taken them before to work mm. because you know how, like, sometimes when you eat um, pandu or something like that, it actually like knocks you. Out, yeah, like, you're tired, you're exhausted. So I was like, man, that was like one of the main reasons I don't take um, you know, those to work. Yeah, even like honestly, like personally, like I don't eat them on the weekends. I'm sorry, on the weekdays. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, because you know it has this tendency of knocking me out, and I'm able to. Yeah. What I need. So you like, often eat light stuff like pasta, yeah. ice, things like yeah. that. Yeah. I have yeah. a story about this food stuff. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> I took akara to work, <laughs> and for our non-Nigerian watches, akara is like it's a it's we call it bean. It's like. Mm-hmm. Um, beans fritters, right? So it's yeah, like beans, black yeah. eyed peas blended with mm-hmm. seasoning and spices, and you fry it like it's like fritters, you fry it like a dough. Yeah, I took a carrot to work because why can't I take a carrot to work? So it was cold winter, I didn't have a car there, I took a bus. So by the time I got to work, their car was already cold. So I was like, yeah. you know what, just pop in the microwave. So they popped in the microwave and I brought it out. The smell 
the, the <laughs> lunch room. But it was good oh, yeah. because it was breakfast, right? The lunch room. So I quickly propped open the doors and the windows. I was like, oh my God, I carried Akara. I just like ran to my office. <laughs> So, and I came in early. So, no, I was the only one on the top floor then. Yeah. Nobody. So, unfortunately, someone else now came in early. And she happened to be a pregnant lady with eyes. Ah. She came in, started freaking out. What is that smell? Bro, I pretended. I said, yeah, I came in and I also found out. <laughs> I'm not going to be embarrassed. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I want maybe, maybe the cleaners didn't do a good job cleaning because I also came in and it was smelly. So I propped open the windows and the door so the smell can go out. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I, I, I had to pretend because I was like, nah, bro, nah. They're not going to say it's BB that. I mean, she went out suspected that it was me, but I, yeah, I was like, nah. <laughs> God forgive me for lying, but <laughs> it is what it is right now. Like I, I just like I was like, no, like I came in and I met the so smelly food. I mean, yeah. we, most of us work from home now, so situations like that would not likely come up. As we, most people are moving to like hybrid workspace. Yeah, don't take smelly food to work. If you can just make sandwiches, just sm- food that smell. I mean, things like jollof rice is not bad. Fried rice, ah, uh, fried rice. Yeah, has they like food. the rice now. Mm-hmm. And rices are like very loved, but like things, that's why things with fish. Mm. Yeah. yeah, smell sensitive, smell sensitive foods. That's the same, but that's so yeah. yeah. All right, I know you want to say something, Bob, so please go ahead. Okay, um, actually, those are like all of the points that I, I uh, have in mind at this moment. Mm-hmm. <coughs> okay, so that's good. Yeah, culture is always a very, it's always a very good one, it's always a very, very good conversation so i wanted to yeah. add that yeah, okay awesome. yeah if you don't mind uh, just some things came to my mind um <clears throat> it's kind of like kind of funny because i remember one of the places that i worked with uh i worked one of the companies i worked with uh, initially um they were really very very inclusive right um uh, the team that i work in like these are individuals from different in fact they were not none of them was canadian right so they were just very, very open-minded. And um, I mean, you could just feel this unity and this workplace um, togetherness, right? Yeah. And it was just awesome. It actually got to the extent that we had one of, we had like a picnic kind of thing. And um, we, were, we were to bring our favorite um, local cuisine. <laughs> I think Man. I cooked um, jello fries or fried rice. I don't remember. But the bottom line was they really liked what I cooked. <laughs> I love to hear that. I think they told me they liked it. <laughs> but yeah, that was really very cool. And one thing that I just also want to like, you know, point out because it's also falls, it kind of like falls within like the work, uh, the cultural um, difference, right? <clears throat> and I learned this from one of the individuals that I interviewed in the course of like, you know, where I'm writing the book. So um, the person was like, Actually, I learned this from two different people. <laughs> the person was like, your accent is going to be secondary if you are very good at what you do. Yes. Right? So if you're like, you know, you're in the law firm or you're in banking firm or whatever it is, like, you know, where I'm from, and you're really very <laughs> good at what you do, people are really going to like switch their ears to want to hear what you're saying. <laughs> exactly. In the worst, worst case, they'll just be like, please, can you repeat what you said? Right? And that's fine. Exactly. Because, hey, like, like you mentioned, Canada is very, very, very multi, uh, multi like, diverse, right? There are lots of like, I mean, like, hey, I don't know. I don't know the exact numbers, but a huge population of, um, uh, Canadi- of Canadian, they are like immigrants, right? Mm-hmm. And the number just keeps growing. So everybody is open to um, diversity, right? And in most of the workplaces, they actually have a um, department that take care of like inclusion and diversity. So um, what I'm just trying to say in essence is don't worry so much about, you know, your accent. Like your accent is not a barrier, right? Mm-hmm. So it's not a barrier. And, um, you know, I think like, you know, focus on what you can control. I know some people take like some classes to help them tweak the accent, but even if it doesn't go completely, it's fine. Like that's still it's part fine. of who you are. And mm-hmm. you don't understand, like people, people can actually like get to like your 
accent. They're like, hey, where are you from? I like your exactly. accent. Exactly. Yeah. Are, you, are you for real? <laughs> exactly. I, I, I really, I really like you that. Are. So don't try yeah. to like, you know, hide it or feel like you, you know, you need to like cover it or feel ashamed mm -hmm. because, you know, no. your accent is always shows like it's part of who you are. Embrace it. Do what you need to do. You know, if you want to, like, you know, to you know, adjust the work now. But just focus so much more on what you can control. Being really very good at, you know, what you do, and honestly, you're gonna command a lot of, you know, like respect and authority. People will definitely want to hear that your accent that some yeah. other people say couldn't give you a job for. You know, so that is yeah. what I would like to say about yeah. that. Honestly, your accent is not a disadvantage. Mm. Not the most other thing is like speak clearly. Don't right. muffle your words. Speak clearly. Your accent is not a disadvantage. In some spaces, it's even work for you than work mm -hmm. against you. Any organization that rejects you because you're your of your accent is an organization you don't want to work in. Right. Any organization that makes you feel bad because you're an immigrant and so, <clears throat> that's another thing, right? So back home, interview is always one way. Yeah, interviewing is two-sided. As they're interviewing you, you're interviewing them. You have a choice to pick the organization you want to work with. So if you're being doing an interview, you're getting some kind of vibe from the interviewer or anybody on the panel, like they're going to have a problem with you or where you're from, which has nothing to do with your qualifications. You can yeah. choose to get the opportunity. Don't 100%. interview the place that is interviewing you. Yeah. Ask them questions, right? What is their view on diversity? Things mm -hmm. like that. Let them, let them know that you are also intentional about where you want to add value to. Yeah, yeah. That's what I like about this side mm -hmm. of the world. It's not, you're not on the give me, give me side. Yeah. You're giving something. It's an exchange. Exactly. You're giving, it's, they're not giving you money for free. The paycheck mm -hmm. isn't free. Mm -hmm. You're giving mm -hmm. value and you're yes. being compensated for what right. you're doing. That's it. Yeah. So, you have the right, the agency, to choose where you want to give value to. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's 100%. it. That's very, very, very true. Very, very true. Very, very. And so, someone put it like this: that <clears throat> the interview process is just like matchmaking. <laughs> Absolutely. It's you. You are really there to figure out. Hey, do I really? Is this a place I really love to work at? What's their, like their take on, you know, like diversity? What's their take on, you know, like, you know, like I can mention, like ask them questions um, as they ask you questions too, because it has to be like, you know, mutual. Yeah, it has to be mutual. It has to be mutual. So yeah, so I'm going to move to my next question. Your book, How to Help Immigrants Land Their Dream Job. It's a huge success and I'm so, so proud of you. So I want to ask what motivated, what inspired you to write this book? Yeah, um, I think it's it's been really very long. As in, I'll try to give you like a, a brief version of the mm -hmm. <laughs> of the motivation. <clears throat> so, obviously, as an immigrant into uh, like to Canada, I had a number of um, you know uh, struggles as well when I was trying to land my first dream job. Like for me, the dream and ideal job was in the area of, um, you know, my specialty. That's what I went to school for, which is computer science, right? I really wanted a job in computer science, right? And um, man, like, I remember, like, I, I went through all of those processes where you submit <clears throat> KT resumes, maybe in a week or in two weeks, and you're like, did anybody call? <laughs> <laughs> you check your phone and it's like, good. Oh, you get the normal res response in the email. Unfortunately, we decided, to, or shall we regret to tell you, or, or like, unfortunately, we, we decided to go with, I was like, uh, and at that time it was really pinching me. Yeah. <laughs> it was really pinching me. And um, I was like, oh God, like what's going on? Um, why is this happening? And I was like, obviously I had like that man said that, okay, I knew I needed to really do really very well at school, which, you know, by God's grace, that was happening. So I was very grateful that I was like, why am I not getting this? outcome right because i thought do well here and then things are going to be fine here and um <clears throat> and so i started you know learning about part of the reason i wasn't seeing the results that i wanted which you know i kind of like shared a little bit of that you know with me not being you know you know um a confident right not putting myself out there uh and demonstrating you know what i what you know i know i'm capable of so that was like part of it. 
and you know, um, God just sent somebody to me. I just don't know, like, like it was, I somebody like currently like a career coach. So this person really helped me a lot with, you know, marketing myself, mm-hmm. um, preparing for re- preparing to uh, to compose myself on like resume, cover letter, and whatnot. So it was kind of like a big blessing to me. Um, and you know, after a series of all of those training per se, wow, uh, the lights began to just open up, right? The ways were just opening up for me. And I was like, oh, wow. So I did not know about so many things. And guess what? I did not even know what I did not know. (sighs) And ignorance, oh God, like ignorance holds holds us back a lot, right? So, um, So like, and then the one thing that I really just appreciate so much about life is once you have that first breakthrough, Oh God, it just begins to open doors for you. Mm-hmm. And so that's exactly what happened to me. Once that first opportunity came, man, like doors were just opening and I was like, wow, this is so awesome. This is so remarkable. And obviously in the course of me trying to get that first one, I had to do some like temporary job that were not even related <clears throat> to what I went to school for. And I, I mean, I was like, I was okay with that at that point because I know it's just temporary. It just preparing me for what I was going in for. So, so yeah, like, um, and so like, you know, I, I was just really very grateful for that opportunity. And, you know, um, in the course of me, like, you know, working, I also got, I've also had the chance to, you know, interact with a number of, you know, immigrants who are in that situation, in that same position where I was like back then, obviously a number of them, I was able to, you know, um, share, um, you know, lessons, mm-hmm. give some pointers, um, and, you know, thank God, a number of them also saw like, you know, breakthroughs too. It's usually very, very, um, what would I say, fulfilling and heartfelt when you you just tell or share something to somebody and you see them get the results and you're like, oh God, like it just, and they like call you and they're like, wow, you know, that job I was I was applying for and you helped me with the cover letter or the resume. I got the job like, huh. I was just like, oh God, this is just so awesome, right? So, um, and obviously it wasn't like for everybody, right? There were some people that, oh, even though I shared some things, it didn't really work, but I was like, okay, yeah, um, just stay, you know, stay, um, stay hopeful and, uh, you know, God willing, uh, something else will come. So yeah, just, you know, <clears throat> all of those together, just um, put together and I was like, wow, uh, maybe I just want to um, help a wider range of audience, right? Because <clears throat> according to like, you know, the research I did, um, at least since the year, I think 2000, at least every single year, about 250,000 people co- mm. migrate to Canada, right? Mm-hmm. 250,000 people, can you imagine? Wow. Almost every single year. <clears throat> and so I'm like, wait, even if it's just one person, <laughs> out of that 250 that can pick up this material, apply and see um, something positive, I'm like, I'll be happy. I'll be more than happy because I know that, you know, verbally I've been able to help people. But mm-hmm. I, like, I just wanted to go, you know, like wider and help much more people. So, um, so yeah, like that's, you know, how the book <clears throat> idea came to be. And obviously there were so many like, you know, um, um, obstacles, there were so many <laughs> breaking moments, right? That's blocked and whatnot, but I was like, um, yeah, God put this in my heart. I would be letting him down and letting so many other people down if I just don't push through this, um, you know, whatever, the, the low periods or whatnot. So I was like, yeah, that was something that always came to come into my mind whenever I felt like, you know, down and discouraged and whatnot. I was like, yeah, as in, I just need to push through so that I can help that one person, right, who would need yeah. this material. So, but yeah, that's kind of like, you know, how the, the book idea came to me. And I'm just very grateful uh, to God. Um, I'm how it so- I'm so glad. I'm so proud of you. I, I'm you. so happy to have an auto friend in my circle. Because uh, I know we have a different conversation to have about authoring and like writing. Oh, books. yeah, sure. Yeah, definitely. We'll talk about that. But yeah, I'm absolutely so proud of you, like putting this out yeah. there. I know it's going to help people and impact people. And I'll definitely be putting the link to purchase the book um, in the comments. So if anyone is interested in this book, if you like to buy it as a gift to your friend that just moved to Canada and they're mm-hmm. trying to figure out how to get into the um, landing their own dream job, this would be, could be important. If you're trying to switch careers, right? Maybe right. you came to and you have to work a factory job but you don't want that anymore and you're trying to move into a professional space this book is for you if you're see 
it's going to apply to you if you're just in that space. And even if right now you're not looking for a job, but eventually you'll be looking for a job. If you like the place you are in, but you still need to polish your skills, right? This book is definitely a highly thing that I recommend. And the reason why I say this is because just like you, I also had that experience. Although mine wasn't in Canada, mine was in the US. And it's just that ignorance. That ignorance that you said is so important. I remember one of the very first interviews I went for, I was applying for um, an entry-level development coordinator role. Mm -hmm. And you're going to laugh. And I was interviewing, it was my first interview, I was interviewing with the director of development. So I sat there, it was a small charity. We were talking, conversing. It's like, oh, okay, so where do you see yourself in five years? Guess what your friend said? I see myself as the director of development of this organization mm. while talking to the director. So I'm not saying I'm trying to get their job. Like, mm. of course, I'm you know, and to me, it's on their fight. But then mm. with time, with experience, with talking to people, with try and error, I learned that you don't answer questions like that, right? Mm. You still want to point back to the value you are. You answer questions like that. Oh, of course, in the next five years, I see myself adding value to whatever. Right. To this organization training people come beside me behind me and finding opportunities for growth right mm -hmm. so there are ways to get these answers to finesse it to reassure confidence and not paint yourself as like an opportunity grabber that is not mm -hmm. that just wants to be everywhere so ignorance it's i wouldn't say it's a bad thing per se but there's a solution to it mm -hmm. and i feel like this book will really help many people many people mm -hmm. there's a lot of differences between right. cancer and whatever country you're moving from so mm -hmm. i would really recommend that you get this book and um and yeah it's 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 really going to like help you prep you prepare you to land that dream job and i i really look forward to it so the comment the link will be in the comment please just find it click it and purchase this book it's, it's going to be so so good so right. um, ask as we've come to the end of this video do you have any final thoughts or comments that you'd like to share with the viewers today yeah absolutely um i think uh first of all i know that coming to a different um, country on its own is very challenging and you know anyone listening i want to commend you for um summoning that courage <clears throat> to take that leap because you're leaving a lot behind, right? Maybe it could be like, you know, your family that you've been with. Maybe it could be like your your um, your friends, your childhood friends, or it could be like the house where you lived in. So many memories, right, that you're leaving behind. But, um, but you know, you do, you're doing that because you believe there's going to be something better, right? Mm -hmm. And um, even though you're not 100% sure, but you just had that hope, right? And you're willing to take that leap. And, um, you know, I know people like, People are always rewarded <laughs> for their courage. And yeah. I just hope that, you know, in taking that leap that you definitely would find, you know, what you, um, what you, you hope for uh, by God's grace. Um, mm -hmm. So I think uh, something that's also really very key would just be with regards to managing expectations, right? I think maybe you touched a little bit, of, you talked about this um, to some degree, uh, managing expectations um, about when you move, right? Um, I think it's really very good to, <sighs> to try to find out what is the reality, <laughs> right? At least before you move, um, <laughs> having to interact with people, right? Before you move, learning from, to find out from them of what to expect, right? Mm -hmm. You may have your own expectation, but, you know, trying to get your expectation close to what the reality is so that you don't get overly disappointed. I think that's a very big one. Um, that's very, very big. And leverage the power of community, um, you know, like, uh, the people that I got to interview in the course of this book, there was one thing every single one of them actually shared that helped them a lot, community, right? Getting involved in some form of community. Um, if you're able to get that, you know, while you were still in your home country via the internet, that would be awesome. You know, connecting with people on Facebook, the Facebook groups where you can, um, get to learn more about uh, a particular area of your interest. If it's say your specific um, area of specialization, mm -hmm. there are gonna be groups on Facebook that you can connect to, to at least find out what's happening, right? On LinkedIn. So just getting involved in the community, it's, it's gonna help you like beyond expectations, I'm telling you, yeah. beyond the wildest um, imagination, right? And obviously when you get here too, trying to hang around with people 
who you know have your who have you know like best interests right at heart who you can actually help who, who who can help you and being involved in the community who um obviously you can um give back to as well um there's a very popular saying that um if you want to travel fast <laughs> travel alone but mm -hmm. if you want to travel far travel together like travel with someone right don't try to do things on your own um be happy be okay you know like make it okay for you to to get help because yeah. you know there are people who are willing to help you more than you can even imagine people are very 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 glad to help you so leverage community um ask for help when needed because trust me there are a lot of people who are very very happy to help um, you know when just you just have to ask right so mm -hmm. um so yeah like um and um yeah and just keep pushing um uh i just believe that uh whenever you know we have like you know dreams and you know like someone listening uh has like maybe a dream to land like a dream job right i just feel like the dream would not be there if it's not really for you if it's not meant for you <laughs> so the fact that you had this dream maybe to migrate to canada uh, and the fact that you had the dream, maybe to, to have like your dream job, just, mm -hmm. just believe that the dream is yours. Yeah. And no matter what it takes, just continue, persevere, do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. um, because I can assure you that if you don't quit, if you don't quit, you're going to have that thing that you want and even more for yourself um, by God's grace. So, um, so yeah, those are the little words I would like to um, end with. And I just wish you the best and um, beyond the sky is your limit. Yes, thank you so much. I like the fact that you ended with that word, perseverance, perseverance, yeah. not giving up, not throwing in the tower when it gets tough, but going back in the ring and fighting for what you want. And like you said, you would eventually get it. It's just a matter of time. Mm -hmm. So I want to say thank you so much, Franklin, for um, coming to my YouTube channel today. It's always a thank good time. <laughs> A very good time when we chat. Um, I would like to put it out there to the audience. If you are watching and let's say you have any questions about um, the book, any questions about moving to Canada, any questions about landing your job, please feel free to add, um, put it in the comment section. Whichever ones that I cannot answer, I'll call Franklin in and we'll respond. If you also have ideas and things that helped you when you're job searching and mm -hmm. trying to find your dream job um, at your workplace, um, yeah please also put it down in the comment section all right now so this is the end of our video if you stayed this long i'm so so glad you did thank you so much for watching and um yeah so hit the subscribe button and hit the like button don't let me come and look for you <laughs> let's be friend. join me on this journey of having wonderful and beautiful conversations on my page so please hit that subscribe button like and leave a comment i look forward to hearing from you i love reading all the comments it means a lot to me so yeah thank you so much franklin um thank you everybody for watching and i hope you have a wonderful day bye bye <laughs>